Welcome everyone to the Whimsical Mind channel. To begin with, I hope you have or have access to pay, perhaps some paper and pen where you can jot down um, ideas or perhaps things that come to your mind as I share with you just some ideas um, of how to achieve grounding, a better state of mind when you don't feel just, you know, your best. Or perhaps when you just want to be able to just be able to tune out or just feel refreshed. So to begin with, I'm going to show you some of the things that I've made, which are quite easy to make and are very simple. So to begin with, this here is a whole bowl of my bowl full of my calming pebbles. Now the idea I got from the internet and on that note, I encourage you to have a look for yourself. As I mentioned different things or things that come to your mind, have a look what other people have done and what they've come up with. So I got this, I cannot remember the website, so I apologize to the wonderful teacher that shared this idea on the internet. And basically she made them for her classroom. So they're just, they're made out of colored clay. And I'll just get a couple out and show you. Bring a bit closer. You can zoom in at any time, of course. So you basically get, you know, you can choose how many colors you want to have, use. I just use a few in each one. I use some single color ones as well. And you roll the clay of, um, into a ball, I'm about this size. And then you just press down with your thumb and one of your fingers like this until it's this shape. And then you just bake it in the oven. So I had a lot of fun making these. Um, I use them in my workshops and I also use them to give to clients, family, friends. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to, to make them and just to give them away. So that's one of the things. Um, the other thing I like to have made and had fun making are little bean bags. And before I go on to the bean bags, the calming pebbles. So how do they work? What's the point of these? So these are basically, it's a, I guess it's a technique that you can teach and use for yourself. Where if somebody has a worrying concern or thought that just is being unhelpful basically. And they want to let go of that thought. So they visualize or imagine giving that thought to their calming pebble. So some people call these worrying stones, but to me, I'm all about, um, you know, getting my brain into gear straight away about what I want to achieve. So to me, these are calming pebbles. So I visualize the concern I have and I imagine pulling it to, into the calming pebble and then just putting it down somewhere. And with that, I put the thought down as well and let it go. Different people use these in different ways. Some people like to imagine um, just enjoy the feel of the pebble just doing this and that in itself is a pattern break of a thought or a feeling that they find unhelpful and can break that pattern and so they can let it go and other people like to just to look at it like they might have it next to the bedside table and they visualize it and every time they see it they just remember to let their thoughts go which are unhelpful so it can be utilized in different ways um, these ones I've made are quite small, so if you were to give them to children, little children, I would definitely would say make them a fair bit bigger, so you know to be on the safe side, for, um, safety always first. The other things I just showed you were my little bean bags. I had so much fun making these. I made a lot of these, and again I use them in my workshops, and I've used them with my kids. I've got photos with my kids, you know, balancing them on their head like that. And walking around you know all these little things you can do use just to focus on something else which is usually really helpful when um, you feel stressed or you just want to you know re just restart um, so these are really easy to make again you know use the material that you find suitable and safe for your um, for your need and yeah they're just so fun and when I made this, of course, then my kids are like, oh, I want my own personal one. So I made some extra ones, you know, for them. The other thing I want to share with you, some people um, like to do hands and crafty things, and I'm one of those. And I personally, whoops, just 
move this over here. I've got a lot of things here on the side that you just can't see yet. Um, I just like making beanies and I like making beanies for friends and family and it just gives me joy. Um, but an activity that's um, also very calming and soothing is just teaching or learning how to do single stitch crocheting like this. So you just do a single stitch. You can zoom in again and you can see what I'm doing. And of course, there's lots of YouTube videos that you can have a look at. People who do it so much better than I am here. <laughs> and basically, it is a very soothing task as well. Which reminds me of a time when I was very sick when I was younger. I think I had the measles or something. And I was bedridden. And I remember having this ball of bright yellow wool. And I spent, I don't know how long, a couple of hours doing this and I basically single stitched the whole ball of wool <laughs> so yeah that's just another little idea um, coming back to the Carmen paper balls just for a second you really can use anything to to do that um, or practice that brain training about letting go of your thoughts or putting them into something some people you know for the kids that might get um, a blankie and they visualize putting all the worries into the blankie and then the blankie gets washed which washes all the worries away there are just limitless um, ideas about how people can how you can do that so again I encourage you to google and have a look for yourself and see what works and see what doesn't and perhaps it just triggers another idea write it down and have a look and investigate it um, be curious um, so I, I've got a little crystal here that I like to use and that's how I use that's what I use to put my concerns and worries I'll put it into my little love heart um, rose quartz crystal crystal and I just like the feel of it that in itself is a pattern break for me so yeah so that's one other thing I have here um, the other thing I have you know again encourages soothing and focus um, just calming your mind um, thinking about something else is you know collecting shells on the beach well I like to collect I like to look for and collect love heart rocks like these I don't know how well you can see those in the camera I'm, I'm using my phone to take these so again feel free to zoom in I know it's not the best technology <laughs> okay on that note just something interesting I just want to share with you it's amazing that when you when you tell your brain what to look for it will find it so you know when before I started collecting love hard rocks I never saw any but since I started to collect them my brain knows to look out for them and I spot them everywhere it just shows just how much a brain is willing to help us find what we are looking for if we just give it the task to do so and of course you can map that across to anything if you want good things to happen or think you want some change you know be specific be very specific what you want and your brain will look for you the things it wants to help you find those things um, the other thing that I want to share with you is this shell okay I like to use this as a soothing grounding activity by placing it against my ear and it sounds like it's the ocean you can hear the ocean that's like what I like to envision anyway or visualize the ocean I just close my eyes and again it's very soothing so that's another little thing um, the next thing I want to share with you is my little um, scent box so I made this for a workshop I did for um, for kids a, a couple of years ago and I have used it since then and for it's an amazing thing how it still smells of you can't smell I wish I could share this with you it smells of orange okay so sometimes you know having a certain sense can bring about a soothing calming feeling a reset um, on that note, um, safety first. So with, with essential oils, I always recommend that you have them out of reach of children and pets. Um, again, Google, find out for yourself, um, you know, what's good and what's not and what to do in, in regards to using essential oils. 
Um, but again, you know, using your senses, the sense of smell can bring about um, very wonderful, calming feelings. I just love it. Which brings me to the next thing I want to share with you. And I just got this out of my garden this morning for you to share with you. So I've got some lemon balm and I have some pineapple sage. The lemon balm, if you crush it, if you get a leaf and you just crush it between your fingers, it smells very lemony, beautiful. Um, and the pineapple sage, it's got gorgeous flowers, mines and flowers at the moment. Look at this beautiful red flowers. If you crush it, it has a scent of pineapple. Well, it's mixed with lemon now because I had the lemon balm in the same hand crushing that leaf. So, you know, again, Google yourself and find out about herbs and, and how you can use them and what's safe to use. And, of course, on that note, you know, being out in nature, being in the garden, being outdoors, playing games outside, you know, like handball or whatever other games that you enjoy playing. Of course, it's always more fun if you have someone to play with and share these moments with. If not, you can, there's lots of things you can do by yourself. Um, and here I've got an orange and I can't give nutritional advice. Um, I'm not expert and not qualified in, in that area. But I'm just going to say, you know, nutrition, what we put into our bodies does affect the way we feel. And so again, I encourage you to Google and find out for yourself what's best for you and for your loved ones as far as nutrition goes. Um, it's definitely worth investigating and being curious about. Um, going with looking at the time, so we've gone for about 11 minutes. I'm trying to get through everything and not make the video too long and, and you become bored. Again, of course, you can pause at your time and walk away and come back to it. The other thing I want to share with you is this glitter jar. Again, I made these, um, a few of those for workshops and I use them to explain to clients um, what happens when they are in overwhelm. So basically it's about looking at the, the jar with glitter and it's so just water and glitter. You're looking at it and it's, it's quite clear. And when someone's in overwhelm, this is what kind of happens. Their brain does this and everything becomes very cloudy and it's very difficult to navigate your way through that. But as you calm your mind, things just start, start to clear up. And of course it's normal to have always a few things floating around, a few of the glitter, because that's life, you know. But it's a basically, you know, it's a teaching tool and it's also fun to make. You can use it as a, as a, um, as a mindfulness or meditation tool as well by just watching the glitter because it gives the message to the brain that things are slowing down. Again, it's just another brain training tool. With these, um, you know, some people, there's great um, recipes, again, on internet. Mine is just water and glitter. So again, I would definitely recommend you always supervise if your kids are using these just to make sure, you know, they don't get tipped upside down and that kind of thing. So again, use common sense and use your own um, ideas and your own research to make this a fun activity that you may want to share. Or perhaps you just want to make it for yourself. I'm quite mesmerized. Okay, I'll better put that down. And I think I've mesmerized my cat over here. There's Meow Meow. <laughs> looking on um, so he's going to be in most of my videos just letting you know the other thing I have here you know I've got um, just one of my family favorites it's called a spotted game you know playing games is a wonderful way to connect with people and which is you know all about um, feeling in balance and happy so it's just a game where you have to you know match up pick different pictures but I won't go through the game at the moment, but I just want to encourage you again just to have a look. See if there's some games perhaps that you already have or you're interested in. There's a lot of things that you can even make. Again, Google and research. Um, but it's a wonderful way to connect um, with family and friends. And on connecting with family and friends, you know, perhaps writing a letter or getting a card. I got this from one of my friends, pen friends, a while ago. And it's just, it's just a card to me. And it's just so nice to be able to connect with um, people that we love 
and it's so nice to get a letter or a card in the, in the post, isn't, isn't it? So, again, it's something, an activity you may want to do that you find interesting. What else have we got over here? I've got my diary. So, journaling is another really good way of um, grounding and, and reflecting in the evening or during the day whenever you feel like it. Um, I use journaling in a very basic way. So, some people love to write lots of things. If you're one of those, that's awesome. Um, I find that I tend to just write down points and sometimes if I don't even feel like doing that I will just put a smiley face or a, an emoji on that day how I felt or what I would like to work on so there are no rules some people like to draw journaling um, there's just so many different ways or perhaps don't even like to write but they like to just record it on their phone so Journaling is a wonderful way to reflect and also to look back and see how you, you know, how you got through difficult times when you forget that you can actually do this. And there's Miyama scratching in the door. I was wondering how long he would last. <laughs> He's walked away, so let's see if he will last through the whole video. So that's another thing, so journaling. Um, of course, you know, um, another favourite of my family's and mine is listening to audiobooks. So here's just, I've just got a couple of mine. Um, audiobooks that my kids love to listen to and of course reading is another wonderful way to um, just to recharge and just have some quiet time Alice in Wonderland is one of my very favorites and you know I've got some other self-help books yeah it's one of the books I love I'm going to do a book review on this one in one of the videos and also on the author because she's just amazing Meredith Gaston, she's just amazing. She's written some wonderful, wonderful books all about self-love and self-care. Um, then perhaps, you know, a forgotten thing, you know, cooking. Cooking is a wonderful way. It involves all your five senses. Um, and it's just a wonderful way to connect and to share with those people you love and also to take care of yourself. As I mentioned earlier, that nutrition. Um, whoops. Then here I've got books. Sorry, this is in German. I, I haven't got any English singing books. <laughs> um, so this is just a, a singing book um, that was illustrated by Danielle Drescher and written by Basti Bond. And again, it's just about, you know, sometimes just singing can make a big difference how we feel, you know, just expressing ourselves. And, you know, it's just a lovely outlet. Um, now, one of the last things I have here, I have here singing bowl and I don't know I might just give it a little turn because I don't know how it's gonna sound when I'm recording so so again it's something you can google about the therapeutic effects of singing bowls some people really love them some people not so much it just depends and again you know take note what comes to your mind so that's something I like to use before I meditate. Um, it just it just puts me right there. Um, second, lastly, here I have. And I hope you can see this. This is called a fluidity stroke. It's a handwriting stroke, and basically, it um, it's it's in its therapeutic um, way. It allows or it trains the brain to have fluidity of thought which can be very helpful when you're writing or when in conversation so again have a look um, google it fluidity stroke hand strokes um, that can bring about um, calmness this stroke also can be incorporated if you wish to um, into your handwriting with the letter f and the letter g and the number eight and lastly I thought I'd finish off with just sharing with you one of my childhood favourites. I'll just get that ready. But before I do this, I'll just remember one more thing I want to share with you, and that was um, a memory I just popped into my head about, you know, sometimes just looking for four leaf clovers can do wonders how you feel. And I have wonderful memories doing that as a child. Um, so here we go, finishing off with bubbles. Let me see, I can see them, but I don't think you can see them. I think you can see them now. Oh, it's so fun. 
you can visualize putting your worries in the bubble and watching it just pop or go into the atmosphere, into the air and your worry and all your worries with them, with them as well. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I missed catch them. All right, till next time. Thank you again for tuning in.